Hi, this is Wes Simpson. I'm president of Telecom Product Consulting, and I am here today to talk about reliable internet stream transport. Uh, RIST is an activity that was started by the Video Services Forum uh, approximately one year ago. And the objective of RIST is to provide a industry standard for allowing interoperability between a variety of different manufacturers that want to accomplish this particular task, that is to get a reliable stream transported over the internet. So let's talk about why we want to have that. Um, obviously, um, internet is first of all very ubiquitous. There's internet connectivity pretty much anywhere on the surface of the earth today, whether it's through uh, cellular modems, whether it's through uh, satellite connections, whether it's through um, direct connections to a normal internet, uh, ethernet type of connection. So all these different places provide connectivity. And the idea is that we want to be able to get a high performance video stream transported across that network so that we can provide a way for broadcasters to get content back from wherever it happens to be occurring. Wherever that uh, broadcast happens to be originating from, we want to be able to get that content back. But the problem is today there are uh, a wide variety of devices that are available but they all use proprietary formats. They're not interoperable. You can't take a video source from manufacturer A and hook it up to a receiver from manufacturer B. So that's exactly the problem that we're trying to solve with this activity group. So sometimes a public internet is the only connection that's available. Um, regardless of uh, how, be how well prepared you are, um, networks fail, you have issues with people running into um, fibers and cutting them, you have issues with uh, networks having interruptions, and you end up with a situation where you have a, a huge variety of different circumstances where the internet is going to be your best way to get that signal back. However, with the internet, there are some issues. There's no way for you to mark these packets and say that they're more important than anybody else's packets. The internet treats all packets the same. There is no priority or so-called quality of service. So you can't say, uh, treat these packets differently from these other packets. And a traditional way of dealing with um, er errors on IP networks, and it's something that the VSF has worked with um, before in our uh, technical recommendation series and also in the SMPTE ST 2022 series, is something called forward error correction. Forward error correction adds extra data to your video stream that allows you to correct errors that might happen during transmission. The problem is that FECs always have some sort of limitation. There's always going to be a number of errors above which the FEC will no longer recover the signal. And the normal mode when that happens is that the signal simply fails. So what we need to do is we need to be able to accommodate long packet gaps and we need to retransmit those signals uh, when it's appropriate, when we have bandwidth available, um, as soon as the network uh, gets back to a normal configuration. So that's what RISC does. Here's a typical RISC application. So we have a sender uh, located at point A that may have sound and video being fed into it. Um, in the vast majority of cases, we're going to compress that content. We're going to use H.264 or possibly HEVC compression uh, to squeeze the video bandwidth down to something we can effectively transport over the internet. We'll do the same with the audio. And then we might send it over a wireless link. We might send it over um, a, a wired ether, uh, internet connection. We might do both at the same time. That's known as bonded connections, bonded cellular, bonded landline to cellular, what have you. Those signals are typically going to pass through a firewall and they're going to end up at some sort of a receiver box. Uh, the receiver box is going to take that signal and decode it. Um, it's going to also communicate with the sender to indicate when packets are lost so that the sender can retransmit those, those packets that have been lost along the way. The output of the decoder is going to be a standard video signal that you're going to feed into your production, whether it's a live production or you're doing something that you're recording or anything else along those lines. So why are we doing this? Well, 
video signals are, especially compressed video signals, are very sensitive to lost packets. If you drop packets at random, it can um, interrupt the ongoing video stream severely or maybe marginally depending on exactly where you happen to hit it. So these numbers are calculated based on uh, some packet loss ratios that you might experience on real networks. 10 to the minus three, dropping one packet in a, a thousand, that's a pretty low quality network. But if I'm running a signal at four megabits per second, that means I'm gonna lose a packet every 2.6 seconds. Obviously that's not something that you're gonna want to have in your live production because you're going to have a situation where people are going to experience uh, possibly video freeze frames, possibly a loss of audio, all kinds of things can happen when you lose uh, one packet. 10 to the minus fourth might be more typical behavior for the public internet. That means we're going to have a glitch every 26 seconds, again running at 4 megabits per second. So we want to get our packet loss ratios down into um, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7, so we have the the opportunity to do an, an, a complete uh, video feed of a, of a program for you know, a few minutes or what have you without having any packet glitches whatsoever. So we're going to use um, risk technology to improve the reliability of the video delivery as it's implemented over uh, the public internet, which may not have really good performance at the particular time you're trying to use it. So the project objective is we're focusing on contribution quality IP video. This means that we're not sending signals to individual people's iPhones. What we're doing is we're bringing signals in from a remote venue or a news uh, feature or something along those lines, and we're contributing those to a network that's going to use that content in order to produce a program and put it out on the evening news or on a sports program or what have you. So contribution quality means that we want it uh, significantly higher quality than what you might experience with uh, a FaceTime connection or something else along those lines. We want the signals to be interoperable, so manufacturer A can generate a signal that manufacturer B can receive. And we want low latency. So what that means is that the total amount of delay from where the video enters the encoder to where it exits the decoder is we want to keep that as low as possible. Now, we're probably not talking milliseconds or microseconds here. We're talking a small number of seconds, um, again, to give us some time to do some of the things we need to to make up for the problems that we're going to encounter going through the public internet. And we want to be able to have these signals operate over hardwired internet, um, LTE or bonded LTE, so the high performance cellular modems that um, are available from a number of different suppliers, uh, both in the US and elsewhere in the world and possibly over satellite. There are um, IP connections that are available that you can use over satellite, and we want to be able to work with those as well. So here's a basic illustration of how the RISC data flows through the network. At the video source, we generate packets and feed those directly into our network shown here as a public internet. Simultaneously while we do that, we're taking a copy of each packet and storing it locally in the encoder in case we need to resend that packet again later. So we don't want to recreate the packet, we just want to keep it on hand until we need it and so that we can resend it if asked by the receiver. So the packets flow through the public internet when they get to the decoder device. If the decoder device detects that a packet, one or more packets are missing, it will send a NAC message, which stands for negative acknowledgement. It will send a NAC message back to the encoder and it will prompt the encoder to retransmit that packet back to the decoder. So there will be some extra time that we want to um, uh, go through that and we have a back and forth to having uh, a packet transmit um, uh, from the original source to the decoder. If it's requested again, it will uh, be retransmitted. And then the decoder's job is to receive those retransmitted packets and put them back in the same order. Again, it's very critical to have the MPEG data stream be uh, processed so that each one of the packets is sent in the correct order to the decode function so you get a good picture when you're done. Um, if that doesn't work the first time, the motto is try, try again. 
So you might have several NAC messages for the same packet, and it might take two or three attempts for that packet to make it through the internet and to the decoder. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, in the decoder, we have to have a buffer that's built in that allows the packets uh, to go through in a FIFO mode, which stands for first in, first out. And when packets get retransmitted, we want them to be put back in the right order, so we have to stick them into the buffer at the appropriate point. So our buffer ends up having to be large enough to accommodate the number of round trips. And the time it takes to do a round trip, of course, depends on the network delay between the encoder and the decoder. So, using some simple numbers, if it takes 10 milliseconds for a packet to get from the encoder to the decoder, um, each round trip to request a packet and have it resent is going to take 20 milliseconds. And if we want to try three times, that's going to take three times 20 milliseconds or 60 milliseconds at a minimum in order to uh, push that signal through. So we're going to need a buffer in the decoder that in that circumstance is going to be at least 60 milliseconds long to allow us to do three tries to re-retrieve the packets. Now, if you can't retrieve it after a certain number of tries, you're going to give up and whatever happens to the video happens to the video. Uh, however, the fact that that 60 milliseconds is there, that's adding delay to the signal. And when you have long network delays, when you have large amounts of buffering here, it can make it difficult to um, retrieve the signal when you have you know, five or 10 seconds of total delay in the end. But it is technically possible and the wrist technology allows you to control that and manage it appropriately. So right now in the wrist group, we're working on a, on a multi-phased specification. We're calling them crawl, walk, jog, and run. So the idea behind each one of these is that we're gonna crawl first before we walk, we're gonna walk before we jog, and then finally after we've achieved our jogging, we're going to put out a spec that's running. So you can see that uh, the user requirements um, get more complex. So we need to handle uh, short bursts in the uh, crawl case. We need to have longer bursts in the uh, walk phase. We might have variable network bandwidth uh, when we're dealing in jog. And with run, we might have redundant transmission paths. We might aggregate bandwidth from multiple different sources. Similarly, on the sender, um, uh, crawl, very fixed rate encoding, and the user is going to control the settings. The, the systems not, are, not gonna inter, um, are not going to configure themselves. They're not going to communicate. So we're going to have an operator there that's going to dial in the right set of parameters to get the encoder and the decoder to work together. With walk, we're going to negotiate the stream. With JOG, we're going to be able to negotiate the bit rates. We'll be able to send to multiple different points. And then, of course, at RUN, we'll have multiple streams of multiple um, uh, IGMP multicasting and then scalable encoding, which means some receivers might get a higher quality signal than some other receivers. Receiver fixtures, uh, fixed buffer size, user control settings, again, on the crawl, adjustable buffer on the walk. Um, have the ability to um, have an adaptive buffer with bandwidth estimation on JOG, and then hitless protection switching in a scalable decoder. One of the things that's not shown on this, this slide is the very important topic of security. We need to be able to provide a secure way to transport that video so that only the intended receiver is going to actually get that signal and not um, a malicious party that is trying to steal that signal. So. We're also in the group actively talking about different types of encryption, uh, different types of virtual private network um, setups in order to secure those streams and make everything work together in a secure manner. This is a set of logos from the various uh, companies that are actively participating in the RIST um, process today. As you can see, we've got uh, um, over a dozen uh, different um, companies comprising uh, companies that make technology as well as companies that use that technology to achieve their business objectives. Uh, we have weekly meetings. Uh, in order to participate in the risk product, um, in the risk process, you need to be a member of the Video Services Forum. Um, and once you're a member, 
Uh, we will add you to the reflector. We will um, include you in the archive so you can see how the standard has been developing over time. And you can um, participate in the decisions that we're making today to decide exactly how we're going to implement the various technologies that are available in order to delete and in, in order to deliver a uh, final uh, specification that will be released to the industry by the video services forum. So for more information you can contact Rick Ackermans who's our chair. Uh, you can contact myself. <coughs> I'm the co-chair and uh, we have a QR code that you can uh, scan with your phone or we can uh, you can visit this uh, URL where there's a copy of a, a poster that goes into a lot of details on the technology as it exists today. Uh, the URL, if you can't read it, is vsf.tv slash capital R-I-S-T, stands for risk, dot S-H uh, T-M-L. So again, this is Wes Simpson. I'm pro president of Telecom Product Consulting. And uh, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Video Services Forum. Uh, and we just concluded a discussion about RIST technology and the work that is going into that. Thank you.